file sharing could be so much better than what the standard is on Windows. Windows uses SMB. And you might be like, what's SMB? It's also called SIFS uh, as a way of talking or integrating with it. And, and SMB is probably the most prevalent. And it, there's so many iterations of it because Windows pretty much just supports SMB. But it also supports NFS, which is practically never used because its implementation on Windows is bad. But when you go to Mac and Linux, pretty much all you see is NFS because of the performance. Look at this. I mean... You're talking three times the performance compared to SMB when dealing with small files. That is amazing. You just destroys it in performance. And then when you start looking at the vulnerabilities of SMB, I mean, there's so many, well over 400 documented CVEs and well more than that in the wild. And almost every ransomware is distributed through SMB. Uh, so it's not a great protocol for performance or security. So let's fix it. You know, there's no reason for Windows to have uh, SMB. We can we can modify Windows to use NFS, much like Linux and Mac use it natively. So what we do is come to old GitHub. There's this huge article, which I love that someone laid this out. It's just, this is not for an average user, and I know that. So what I wanted to do is make things a little bit better. And uh, what I wanted to do here... I'll launch into my little script. I added a little button to for you to click. But before you just go out and click this and be like, yes, NFS all the way, I need to teach you what this is doing and actually show you some of the things that's happening so you can figure out if this is right for you or not. Uh, because NFS on Windows 10 and Windows 11, it should be noted that there is no server capabilities. You can't share a folder through Windows using NFS uh, without using like Windows Server. You know, that it does have an NS NFS administration tool. And I need to probably dive more into that. But for now, I'm using a Synology box here in the studio, and I wanted to tie all my Windows boxes into those NFS shares instead of using SMB because one, I don't want to be vulnerable. And two, I want the performance gains of NFS. So what this button does, I'm just going to lay it out real fast, is it enables the Windows feature NFS. This actually, uh, the guide that I was using, they actually changed the syntax. This is actually uh, enable optional feature now. I actually made a tweet about it, which <laughs> it's, it's so silly, the new syntax Microsoft chose, but I digress. It still works. And then we stop the client. We add a couple registry entries here. We start the client. We make the config so we can read, write, and execute to it, and then we just mount our drives. Uh, the mounting does look a little bit different from what you see on Windows or what you see on Linux and Mac, but not too bad. And what we'll do is just do startup scripts to do this. In business, I do login batch files usually and have users just auto do that. So if I ever needed to do something like this, I can just modify one file and just distribute it to, to hundreds of people if I need. Uh, but having said that, we can just do this locally, and I'm going to just show you all that. So what the script does is this whole top half here. Uh, I haven't enabled NFS on this box. Uh, I have done it on many other boxes, but uh, this whole portion got reduced to that one button using my little utility. So let's click that, and I'm actually going to bring up the prompt so you can see kind of what's happening in the background. And we'll move this over, and I'm going to press this button. You'll see it's adding a couple optional features, uh, services for NFS, NFS administration, and uh, another just basic infrastructure for NFS. So let's uh, let this run. And once this is done, we should be good. We'll have the services stop for us, the registry things added, and all the optional features enabled. All right, that took about three to four minutes on my PC. And now NFS is all set up. All the roles have been added. Registry entries are all done with just this click of the button. With that done, we can actually mount our devices and our shares. But I wanna just log into my Synology box, show you what I'm doing for that because how permissions and how sharing works is a bit different in NFS. 
I find it a lot superior, especially if it's a small network. Now, obviously, really big networks with a lot of permissions and users-based permissions, that's what SMB uses. Uh, its complexity is pretty high, and also that's why there's so many more vulnerabilities. With NFS, it's more of a host-based uh, permission, meaning you're not saying, hey, this is my user to log in. Yes, you can do user-based on NFS, but uh, I want to teach you a really simple way of doing NFS that most small small businesses and also small networks can use uh, with a lot of success. So I pulled up uh, my base system here, and, and I'm just going to do NFS for FCP, which is what I use for Final Cut Pro and my Mac to share everything. I, I do all my edits directly off of this NAS box. So networking performance is a big must for me. SMB is so far back, it doesn't have the performance to even do direct video edits through the share. That's why I'm using NFS. But I wanted to show you what kind of how host-based authentication works. I can put specific IPs, or I can say, hey, I want this entire subnet there and allow all of that in. So you can actually map whatever user you want coming from this IP to whatever you want. If you want it mapped to the admin user, you can do that. You want to map it to a regular user, you can do that. Uh, all of it is set right here in NFS permissions. If you're hosting a share from Linux or Mac, uh, it can also look different from this. Uh, Macs, I think, use AFP, which is a different one I don't want to get in today because it's just Mac only. But I at least want to touch on this. This is how I manage my NFS permissions and uh, works pretty good. But one thing you need to look at is how you access those shares. Down here, the mount paths, uh, volume 2 FCP. So let's go ahead and mount this on Windows and see what that looks like. So I'm going to close out of my little toolbox here and we're going to go into just command prompt uh, as our user. We don't want to be as admin in this. Uh, this is PowerShell, so we'll do CMD to pull up just command prompt. Now we could do mount and it shows all our mount points, but we want mount O anon. Uh, that's just the user that we're going to be using because we don't care. All the permissions are based on the host, which is the IP of this machine. And then we just type in uh, back, back, and then the IP of the NAS box, back, and then the volume to backspace FCP. And then we would put the actual whatever we want. I'll, I'll put this as X drive colon. And this should mount to here. Now you might be thinking, well, on Linux and Mac, those are all forward slashes. And I always like to make this uh, portion, you know, just, just something for you to remember. If you're working with a Unix-based system, whether it's Mac or Linux uh, or BSD, whatever it might be, they're forward thinking, so they use forward slashes. And if you're working with a Microsoft or a Windows system, it's backwards thinking, so it uses backslashes uh, to navigate. So I always try and think of that analogy. It usually helps a lot. So now we've mounted this device, and we can go ahead, launch our file, and you can see xDrive FCP here, which is great. It's all right there, easily accessed. Now I've already mounted these as SMB shares. Let's go ahead and disconnect them and disconnect that. And let's mount that to our uh, system. So this one's my main pool. We'll, we'll make that share and we'll put that under the M drive. And then I have images for all the images that I download. And we'll put that to the I drive. And if we look here, it already reestablished these as NFS shares instead of SMB. So obviously we don't want to get into command prompt and do this every time. That would kind of suck, right? Uh, what we would do is just do shell colon startup. And what we're going to make is a little batch file. These are as old as in back in the 90s. I was making batch files. If anybody remembers like auto exec back, uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, let's go and just say mount drives dot bat. We'll change that. It's going to look like that. We're going to hit edit. And then what we're going to do is take these mount deals. And, and why I kind of did this through command prompt first is one, I wanted to make sure I get the syntax correct and it properly mounts before I make a startup script. And then finally, the images drive. And that's pretty much all the drives I, I like to share and paste that in. And we have our batch file. So we can do... Uh, Let's test the batch file out. Uh, we'll just go mount. 
And we're just going to go U mount X drive M. I think there's an actual all command, but we're just going to use U mount just so you get that. And I drive. So then if we look at mounts again, there's nothing there. So let's test this batch file and we're just going to click it. And just like that, let's go mount. All of them are back with the proper properties and everything looks great with the world. And in our folder, let's go to this PC. You can now see all these mounted drives in NFS format. So we get that performance boost. We have a much better time. Uh, so this is my iteration of it. One thing I do want to mention before you go, this is all open source uh, for this. So if you want to make your own script, you can. If you want to support this script, by all means, head over to ChrisTitus.com forward slash Windows Toolbox. I do have an executable, so you could do this offline over there if you wanted to run this script offline. I have download instructions and you could run it as an executable. However, I still recommend just running the script directly from GitHub if you want to go that way. This is uh, just to help support, but also if you do want a, an old school executable, you can do it that way as well. So with all that, let me know what you think of NFS. I know a lot of people are curious about it and all Windows users or most Linux and Mac users are already using it. But uh, I wanted to tie Windows users in and make it easy for y'all because the way uh, Microsoft did it was just kind of a little bit wacky. And uh, Microsoft, do better. <laughs> is all I'm saying. But with this, at least you can get it going now. And now you have NFS, you get that performance, you get the security from it, and uh, everything's right with the world. But let me know how I did in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.